Hello Kerbalots and welcome to Lathe or Bust, part 3, Spider Over on the Water, plus some Lathe Explosions. We'll get into that, but first off we have to get the Spider Over on the way to Lathe, and as promised I've added a few more Kerbals to this mission. We have Joshua C137 and Rubix Avery on this mission. As you can see from this epic launch, it needs quite a lot of fuel, especially with all the boosters. Basically, this rover has uh, jet engine fuel and it's going to use the jet engine itself to get around to lathe. But as the title suggests, this thing can go on water as well, so it needs the jet engines. I don't think you can use wheels to get across the surface of water. I'm sure we've tried even here in real life. And that is why the Kerbals have chosen jet engines to get their rover across the surface of the water. But in hindsight, I did add extra tanks to the rover itself, and that was to give her about two, maybe three hours of fuel. In hindsight, I don't think I should have, because I realized it's going to take a long time for it to go across the surface of the water. You'll find out when we get to the video part, when we land this thing. Or not spoil it, will it survive landing? I will find out. <laughs> oh, well, with that aside, spoiling everything before the video continues. Although, we do have other things going on in this mission because after this is landed, we are also going to take our jet around the surface of Lathe. But first off, we have to get this to Jewel. Now, this takes took a long time. I think it was because of the size, the extra parts, all the struts and everything on this rover. It did take a lot more, more CPU computational time. But, as you can see, with the magic of video editing, it was so quick, I don't know why I would complain about it. <laughs> but no, seriously, so this did take a long time to get to lathe. And I'm probably hearing you ask, how do you get to lathe? Well, first off, you go to Jewel, you get yourself into highly elliptical orbit, then you hire the periapsis to that of the same height of lathe, until and then you do some orbits until you get an encounter a lathe and then adjust it so that you'd be able to get yourself into orbit around lathe and that gives us with just enough delta v to get into orbit but also as you can see well as you probably don't know but because i haven't told you yet i've added extra tanks onto this last stage and that was because i want to deorbit this in a different way to all the other craft i don't want to use a heat shield because uh, normally this thing flips out i've tried several different configuration of heat shields including the inflatable inf infamous inflatable heat shields so i decided what we'll do is we'll deorbit this and will kill all or most of the speed using the rocket engine themselves. This poses a few challenges in that, well, you need the extra fuel, and that's why the boosters themselves, when we launch this into orbit, were extremely huge. But will this survive? Will Joshua C137 be able to pilot this thing into the atmosphere safely? Will they survive the landing? Will Rubik's Avery eat a sandwich as it flies away from him because of the extreme G-forces that are now encountered by this thing? <laughs> we will find out in a moment. But in all seriousness, serial, serious? I can't say it. But in all seriousness, the best way to deorbit something is to kill speed as much as possible first. Let it fall like this until you get through the worst of it, until you can open the parachutes and then slow yourself down. Now, of course, it's not practical on all missions. Like on Duna, you don't need heat shields because the atmosphere is so thin, but you do need a lot of parachutes. And normally, you need to use jet, uh, not jet, but you need to use rocket engines to slow yourself on the last moments before landing. Otherwise, you'll break your landing struts or your rocket engines. Well, I suppose say that every planet in Kerbin system or in real life poses challenges like uh, breaking your wheels upon landing. Yes, I don't think it had enough parachutes. <laughs> anyway, easy enough to do. Curl Kerbals have the ability to repair tires. I'm not sure how they uh, were able to repair all these tires. And by the way, if you're wondering, yes, these tires are quite large. I used the tweak scale mod, it was the only way I could get this to float on water without the tanks on the bottom of the rover touching the water and slowing it down. So yeah, I didn't want to install the mod, but hey, I want this to be epic and floating on the water. 
Anyway, once Joshua has finished fixing all of the wheels, we can get on our way towards the landing site of the Kerbals. Yes, there is. There's two parts to this mission. Uh, other than the rover going to explore, they have to deliver some specialized tools to some Kerbals, which have already landed on here on lathe. And basically, in the last episode, I delivered everything the landing craft. Uh, the orbiter and also the jet and well, the jet and because lathe has an auction atmosphere we can use jet engines on this on this planet which is awesome i just keep on saying planet it's actually moon of jewel anyway let's get joshua c137 out meet the other kerbals and once we've unloaded these two kerbals we can send the jet over because I can only fly one thing at a time, so... <laughs> That's unfortunate with the game. I wish you could be able to set an autopilot, which you didn't have to take care of, and you can just let the game do it in the background while you're flying something else. That would be awesome. Also, multiplayer. A proper official multiplayer. Anyway, here is Western Dodo, as we landed in the last episode. Let's get him on the way. And yes, you probably noted that mech chip was on the nose of this plane. I wish I placed it somewhere else, even clipped it into the cockpit itself. But uh, yeah, we'll have to make do with that. And also I've got to set action groups and things like toggle the engine mode and deploy in the flaps to help braking when we're landing. But hey, we are getting the Kerbals to test it in real life situations. Um, yeah, on the mission <laughs> when we can't fix them. Well done. And you may have noticed on the takeoff that we have explosives on the bottom of this jet. Hmm, wonder what these are for. Well, we'll get into that science of that, but first off, let's get landing. If any of you has watched my landings in the past episodes, or even on live streams, I'm pretty good at landing. It's just surviving the landings, which I'm not very good at. But luckily, Western Dodo, with the instant wisdom, is piloting in the last episode he was sitting in the passenger seat we didn't realize that until he actually got out of the jet and luckily dodo is a much better lander than i am well let's taxi him on the way to the base and then we can get all the kerbals out for the photo shoot transfer the tools that are needed for the jet and the scientist and then also, yes, I forgot. I installed a new mod which was suggested by a friend, which is called Through the Eyes. And as you can see, we are looking through the eyes of the Kerbal. I've removed the helmet, otherwise normally you could see the helmet around the edges. But I think this would be cool, perhaps on EVA. I'm not sure about the controls though. At the moment it just seems like the Kerbal's just gliding across the surface. Perhaps it would be awesome with some walking. I think all the mod does is put the camera inside the Kerbal's head and luckily we don't see the Kerbal's head pointing through or the Kerbal's brain. <laughs> that would be rather odd, I think. And controlling it seems a bit weird, but I think it might do for some awesome shots. Perhaps if we're in space and we're using the jetpack. Anyway, now Western Dodo has got the tools he requires. We can send the rover on its mission. My maiden vision. <laughs> Can you say it? On its maiden mission. And that is mainly just to go on the water because it's super cool. But also to explore the surface. Now I'm not entirely sure what type of science a rover on the surface which uses jet engines to go uh, uh, as fast as possible is mission or uh, capable of. I don't know what they would do. Perhaps they would stop in the ocean, get a fishing rod out, see if they can catch some fish and some samples and uh, a little barbecue grill. But yeah, Rubik, Avery, Kerman and Joshua 3 C137. They're going across the surface, they stop in fishing and then once they get to the other side, who knows what they do? I don't know. All I know is that rock music was required for this <laughs> until we got to the other side i realized that i added too many tanks to this that even the thrust of the jets weren't able to get it up the hill on full blast ah 
engineering challenges. <laughs> Next time, remind me to remove those extra fuel tanks on the bottom of that thing. It works so much better without them. But leaving that, leaving these Kerbals aside now, as they go on their mission, we have to get uh, Western Dodo, or yeah, Western Dodo and Chris on the mission. Now, Chris is our supporting, our specialist scientist. He's going to be uh, deciding where the, the places where we're going to land and do our science experiments. Now, what science experiments are you asking? I don't know. Well, I do know. And uh, we'll find out. But first off, let's go to an island far, far away. And there's a reason behind the madness of going to an island where our other Kerbals are not. That's because these, this science mission is extremely dangerous. Well, it's not really extremely dangerous, but we're going to pretend for that it is. Anyway, deploying flaps, coming in for landing. Western Dodo laughing at the dangers of almost crashing on a dangerous planet or moon. By the way, I did crash at this point. <laughs> this was the second landing. I should have included that in the footage. But here we go. This is the mission. As you can see, the bottom of the plane is lined with explosives. We couldn't afford to put uh, decouplers to decouple these because there would be too many and I wouldn't be able to put so many explosives on here. So what we do, we set the explosive time to 1 minute and 10 seconds. Quickly! Quickly, Dodo, take off. And I have to say, the game was running at about 11 frames per second at this point. I don't know why, perhaps because I've got so many craft in orbits and on the other moons. I'll have to do something about that. We'll have to do an epic mission where we return all the Kerbals back to Kerbin from all the moons. And we'll have to send some rescue missions. Anyway, the explosive worked great. The Kerbals at the other island detected explosions and with the help of detection units all across the planet, which we have not dropped because I'm an idiot. But with those explosions, we be able to detect what's likely to be in the center of the planet or moon. But as you can see, we needed extra explosives. This was a site of great interest. And oh dear, we cannot thrust up the hill. What are you going to do? Well, obviously, point downhill, but we have to do this quickly. I set up for 70 seconds, one or two seconds between each one, so the lowest was 65 seconds, I think. But we make it in the air in time. Luckily, when the frame rates drop down, luckily it drops down the timing of everything else, like those explosive took uh, two minutes to explode, I suppose. Anyway, our mission done. It is now time to head back. Thank you. I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer.